We are glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. And now, here's Charles Caps. Now, that's a very simple and elementary thing, but it's profound. If you're sitting out there and the dog is licking you in the face, don't call the dog. If you want the cat and the dog's there, call the cat. Now, what are we getting to? If you have lack and want abundance, don't talk about lack and call lack. Call for abundance. I have abundance and no lack. My God meets my need according to His riches and glory because I give and it is given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Somebody said, yeah, but what if some don't believe? Well... The Bible says that. If some don't believe, let God be true and every man a liar. (laughs) Isn't it funny when you get down to dogs and cats and apples and oranges, how you can understand things better? Now you take the guy that says he does not believe in calling things that are not as though they were. Why, I just don't believe you can do that. But when you follow him to feed his dog, he'll call the dog if the dog's not there. But most Christians... When there's a promise in the Bible that is not fulfilled in their life, they won't call it. They call the thing that's already there. They talk about it. They pray about it. They pray the problem. They talk the problem. Now, when I was farming, we had a certain 40-acre block of land that just had Johnson grass all over it. you know what Johnson grass is? It comes up from the roots. You don't have to plant it every year, man. I mean, it just keeps coming up and coming up. Now, it was a problem to us. Now, we had to do special things to that to get rid of that Johnson grass. And we just had to do it year after year after year. And finally, we got rid of some of it. But uh, now, we had this special problem over there. So what if I'd have got up some morning and told the men working for me, well, we're going to go plant that South 40 over there. They said, well, what are we going to plant? I said, Johnson grass. They just said, you must be out of your gourd. Why are we going to plant Johnson grass? Well, you just got to do it like it is, and it's got Johnson grass on it, so we got to plant Johnson grass. Now, that's the way a lot of people think. They think, well, I've got this problem. I mean, we can't pay our bills, so I'm just saying it like it is. We can't ever pay our bills. Hey. The dog's licking you in the face. Don't call the dog. (laughs) Call the thing that's not. Now see, that's just the same as a farmer having trouble in a field with Johnson grass and going and planting Johnson grass. He's going to have more of the problem. The more he calls that lack, the more lack is coming. How many of you know the devil will come buddy up with you if you let him? You want to know how Jesus defeated the devil? With the word of God. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Every time the devil come at Jesus, he'd quote what God said. He'd quote what God said. If you're ever going to defeat the devil in any area of your life, you're going to have to get God's word in your mouth. You're going to have to speak God's word when it seems like it's the furthest thing from the truth. When it seems like it's so far out, you just don't know how in the world it could keep from being a lie. But you know what the Lord said to me one time? He said, son, I was confessing, I have abundance and no lack. My God has met my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And right then, I didn't know whether I'd be able to borrow enough money to farm another year or not. And my old head, my religious head started giving me trouble. And my head said to me, My carnal nature said, well, now you're a pretty thing. You're supposed to be a Christian. Here you are lying. And I just stopped and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I feel like I'm lying saying all these things, the promises of God. Spirit of God said to me, said, son, how could you lie saying what I said? See, that's all I was doing, just quoting what God said. He said, how could you lie saying what I said? Well, you can't lie when you say what God says. See, now somebody might hear you and think, well, that old boy don't have, he don't owe anybody. He don't have a pain in the world. He's got all the money he needs. Well, I didn't lie to them. They just heard me calling things that are not. 
I wasn't trying to intentionally convince somebody of something that wasn't really true. I was just calling things that are not, and they just happened to hear me calling it. See, you out there calling the dog, here, pooch, here, pooch, you're not trying to convince anybody that pooch is there. You're trying to get him to come. Isn't that right? So when we're calling things that are not, we're not trying to convince somebody that it's already happened when I'm calling my body well and saying I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I'm not trying to convince you that I am perfectly well. I'm calling that into existence. It's just like calling that dog. And if you call it long enough, it'll come. Now, you take a fellow that says, well, I just don't believe in calling things that are not. I believe in calling it just like it is. You just got to say it like it is. Well, now you just follow him around a few days. He goes off, comes back home, you know, and it's 90 degrees outside, and he walks in the house, and his house is about 104 inside. And you watch him. He'll walk over to that thermostat, and he'll turn it to 70 degrees. Then I'm going to tap him on the shoulder and say, I thought you didn't believe in calling things that are not. Well, what do you mean? I don't. I don't believe in calling things that are not. Well, why did you call for 70 degrees temperature in here? It is not 70, it's 104. (laughs) Now, see, in everything else in the world, he believes in doing that. But when it comes to Bible promises, he don't believe in doing that. You know why? Because he's been deceived by the devil. Our minds have been clouded by the devil. See, in everything else in the world, We operate this way. You walk to that thermostat and when you turn it to 70 degrees, you are calling for things that are not. And when you call that cold air into existence, what did it do with the 104 temperature? It nullified it, didn't it? It disappeared. You called the cold temperature in and it took care of the 104 degrees. But now see, that man will go over there and he'll dial that in there and then he'll turn around and criticize you for saying you have abundance and no lack. Now you getting this? This is strong. But you see, it needs to be said because bless their hearts, there's a lot of people that have never understood this. This is God's method. Folks, we're talking about operating on a higher plane than what most people have ever, ever tried to operate on. That's right. And I tell you, don't knock it until you put it in motion in your life. And like I said, it's not going to happen just because you said it. But the saying it is involved in making it happen. It's a seed. Your words become seeds that cause the manifestation of that. See, and not only that, faith cometh by hearing. Now, if you're quoting the word of God, you're going to have more faith in God's promise, right? If you're praying the promise of God, Father, I thank you that my needs are met according to your riches in glory because I've given, it's given unto me good measure. It'll even build your faith while you're praying. But if you're praying the problem, dear God, my debts or bills are piling up. I'll never get them paid. Lord, this mountain's getting bigger every day. Oh, dear God, I don't know what we're going to do. You're going to get up from prayer with no faith at all. You'll destroy your faith while you're praying that kind of prayer. But if you'll pray the Word of God, if you'll pray what God said, and speak what God said, proclaim it, speak it out of your own mouth, where you can hear yourself say it, then I'll tell you what, God will move heaven and earth to make it come to pass. It's not a matter of us making God do something, it's a matter of us activating what God has already set in motion. See, He's already said that. The Apostle Paul said, my preaching to you was not yea and nay. He said, I didn't preach promises and said, this one's yes and this one's no. The promises are yes and amen. In other words, God's already said yes to it and that's the way it's going to be. (laughs) If the promise is in the Bible, he said yes to it. So many people, because they don't understand the Bible principle of calling things or not. Now remember what the Apostle Paul said? God chose this method. I didn't choose it. God chose it. This is God's method. And you know, if we're going to argue with God and His method, then we're in trouble. If we're incompatible with God, we're going to have to change. God's not going to change. (laughs) You know, that's very evident. And I'll tell you, it'll change you when you begin to call for the things that are not. The Bible promises of prosperity, 
of healing and all of the other things, whatever you find in the scripture, find scripture for what it is you desire. Begin to speak it. You could be highly developed in salvation scriptures and not even believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But you start quoting baptism scriptures and the Holy Ghost scriptures and you'll end up getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Because faith will come for it. The same way on other things. That's the reason people don't believe in it. They've never quoted it. They've never said it. Dean, come up here. What'd you come up here for? <laughs> you called me. I called you. Well, now you've been sitting there all through this service, and you didn't come up here then. Why did you come now? <laughs> well, thou knowest. <laughs> I didn't call you till now, did I? If I'd have called you right in the middle of this sermon, you'd have come up here, wouldn't you? You was willing, wasn't you? See, you was willing. He was willing any time to come up here. But the reason he didn't come up here any time was because I didn't call him. But as soon as I called him, he came. Isn't that amazing? You can sit down. I rest my case. Praise God. Can you say amen? I'm glad you could join us for the Concepts of Faith broadcast today. This last day for CD offer number 7215. It's entitled, Calling Things That Are Not As Though They Were. Two CDs for $15 plus $4 postage and handling, total of $19. This is one of my favorite series. Now, do you realize this is the way God taught Abraham faith? The Bible says Abraham believed God. It was counted to him for righteousness. Well, Abram was his name at first, but Abram never did believe God the way Abraham believed God. Now, the scripture says of Abram in chapter 15 that he believed in the Lord. Well, it's good that he believed in the Lord, but it says that Abraham believed God. You can believe in the Lord and not believe a thing he said in his word. And because Abram was old, he was 75 years old when God gave him the promise, and his wife was barren, he had a problem believing God. So God had to instigate his law of faith and confession to get this man to gain faith. So he changed his name to Abraham, which meant father of a multitude. So he had to confess what God said about him. Now, this is why confession is so important. When you're confessing the word of God, most of the time you're calling things that are not manifest in your life, and you call them as though they were manifest in your life until they are manifest in your life. Now, this is where some of you have been missing it. You've been calling things that are as though they are, and they are, and they'll stay that way as long as you're calling it that way. Because you've said it over and over till it's planted in your heart, and what you sow, that's what you reap. Now, you need to know that calling things are not is a Bible principle. Don't let somebody talk you out of it. Read Romans chapter 4, where it says, Abraham became fully persuaded that what God had promised he was able to perform. Abram never did get fully persuaded until God changed his name and forced him to say what God said about him. Now, somebody is not going to twist your arm and make you say what God said about you, but if you'll say what God said about you, it'll cause faith to come in that promise. And that's the way you enter into the blessings of God. You sow a seed and you reap a harvest. That's CD offer number 7215. Two CDs for a total of $19. We have a toll-free order line, 1-877-396-9400. Until Monday, this is Charles Capps reminding you the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and yes, Jesus is coming soon. To order the product offered today, call 1-877-396-9400 or write Charles Capps, P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. A complete list of CDs, books, and DVDs are available online at charlescaps.com. Through the website, you can listen to this radio program again and subscribe to our podcast. This broadcast is sponsored by Charles Caps Ministries and our listeners in this area.